Bye. 
God bless you, South Bay family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Today we are celebrating 35 years of ministry here at South Bay Community Church. We have come to give him the glory and the honor and the praise for all that he has done. Come on, right where you're watching, can you just clap your hands and celebrate the Lord? If you're on Zoom, Facebook, it doesn't matter, but celebrate the Lord with us as we declare how great is our God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, lift your voice and sing it with us. Tell them again, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. 
as the band continues to play, I want you just to take a few moments and just think about how good the Lord has been. Don't slow down. Keep stay right there. We just want to take a moment and just stop and pause in the middle of this song and honor the goodness of the Lord to South Bay Community Church. He has been faithful. He has been great. He has been a healer. He has been a savior. He's been a redeemer. He is our great and worthy God this morning. So we don't want to rush past this moment of just stopping and lifting our hands, even if you're watching on Zoom or wherever you are, but lifting your hands and saying, God, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for South Bay Community Church, for all the lives that have been touched here, for all the souls that have been saved here, for the lives that are yet to be saved and yet to be touched. We give him all the glory and we give him all the honor. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all can clap too, praise the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is good, and we celebrate his goodness this morning. He's been all that and more. He's been a way maker for most of us. He's been a promise keeper. He's been light in dark places. He's been everything that we need and more. So let's sing to him this morning. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. We celebrate and we honor him this morning. Hallelujah. I invite you to turn your heart to heaven. Forget about everything else. Put your coffee down. Let's worship together this morning. Come on, let's sing. You are here. You are here. Moving in this place. Moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. that again you are here you are here moving in this place moving hallelujah in this place. I worship you I worship you I worship, I worship you. you come on let's tell him it is way maker way maker miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, God. Say it again, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. You ought to brag on him. My God. I'll sing you are here you are here and you're touching every life touching every heart. I will worship you I worship you we worship you Of you. I will worship you. Come on, let's tell him who he is. Waymaker, everybody say. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, let it ring out in your homes this morning. Who you are. You are here. You 
you're mending every heart. Mending every heart. So we worship you, oh God. I worship you. We worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. And you're turning lives around. Turning Hallelujah. Lives you did it, God. So we Let's build it. Let's sing. He's a way. this morning he's a way maker come on everybody sing it way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are that is who you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper and worship him right where you are this morning. Come on, clap your hands and celebrate the fact that he's our way maker, that he's been a promise keeper, that he has been light in dark places. Come on, you ought to celebrate him. You ought to bless him for healing hearts in this place. You ought to bless him for saving souls, for mending hearts, for turning lives around in this place. God has been faithful to South Bay and we give him all the glory. And we give him all the honor this morning. God, we bless you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness, oh God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your patience, oh God. Thank you for loving us and never giving up. Thank you, oh God, for holding our lives in your hands this morning and for the days to come. Hallelujah. Can we do it one more time? Come on, let's sing it. Keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Say it to him one more time. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate the Lord right where you are this morning. Happy anniversary, South Bay Community Church family. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Praise the Lord. Happy anniversary. We welcome you today as our celebration for 35 years. God has been our way maker here at South Bay. And we are celebrating today his goodness, his faithfulness, his provision, all the ways God has been our way maker. 
and we are so delighted that you are celebrating with us today. I am Pastor Tammy Long, one of the co-lead pastors here with Pastor Brian Murphy, who welcomed us, if he can wave, and Pastor Tracy, who just led us in that incredible worship. And we are excited that you are with us today. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we are so happy that you are with us and we welcome you. We would love to get to know you. If you have questions about our church, we would love to answer those. And at this time, we wanna just take a few moments just to greet each other. I see faces that I'm so excited to see, faces that we have not seen for a while since we're in this just unbelievable season of COVID. And so we want to give you a moment just to virtually hug, to meet and greet. And so we're going to take just a few moments to break you up into a breakout room of about five to eight people. If you are new or visiting us, please go ahead and join in the group. We just want to say hi and get to know you. And then in a few moments, we will come back and continue our time of worship together. You will see shortly on your screen an invitation to join a room and just go ahead and join that room and then we will resume our time of praise and worship together. God bless you as you meet and greet. Bye everybody. Hey, you hey, you hey, hello, hello, hello. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Hey. Good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Good morning. Hey, Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Welcome back, everyone. I can tell that you enjoyed your time of meeting and greeting. I can just feel the love oozing through the screen here, and it is just wonderful for us to be together. As we continue with our time of praise and worship today and celebrate God's goodness to us and hear the stories of how God's been so faithful, we have a special guest this morning, one who probably needs no introduction. You probably or may have seen him on Netflix's Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, or you may have seen him in the uh, Disney film Tangled. Uh, you may have seen him as the genie in Aladdin, or you may have had the opportunity to see him as the Marquise de la Font and Thomas Jefferson role in Hamilton. Uh, but this morning, we know him as James, our own James Iberhart from South Bay. And he is here with a special message and a song for us today. At this time, we welcome James. Hello, South Bay. My name is James Monroe Eigelhart, and uh, I just want to say happy anniversary. And I grew up in that church. And I, when I say grew up, I mean grew up in that church. And I love you for allowing me to grow up in the church. I not only found a wonderful church family, but I found dear friends and uh, great adventures. And it all started, I was about 14 years old. And no, actually I was 14 years old and my mom was playing at South Bay already um, for the choir. And she, I was having some teenage issues at my other church. I stayed at the church she used to play at and I was having some teenage issues. And so my mom said, hey, why don't you come over here? It's a little bit different. And she said, by the way, why don't you uh, also bring your drum set you can play with me? And I was like, okay, basically my mom wanted me to have a job, which is fine, I thank her for that. So every Sunday we would grab my drum set, put it in the car, and go to the school. Yes, we were worshiping in a school. I think it was like a junior high or elementary school in Fremont. And we would set up the drums, and then we would do the service. And after it, we would break it all down, put it back in the car. This was back-breaking work for a teenager. I mean, I was 14, and my mama wanted me to drag these things over and over. But I'll never forget the first time I heard Dr. Long speak. It wasn't about fire and brimstone. It wasn't about if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. It was making God and the Bible relatable to life. It wasn't a bunch of these and thous and what you shouldn't do. It was literally, he took, he made life lessons and I understood it. It, it touched me, it, gra it grabbed me and I was like, thank you. And I said, this is where I wanna be. And I have a great family. I have a great mom, a great dad, but I also had some many cool dads 
at South Bay. So I thank you gentlemen for helping me cultivate, become the man I am today. I had a gr a many, many, many aunts from people in the choir to people um, on this in the service industry there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me become who I am. Without South Bay, I wouldn't be who I am. And I just wanna say thank you. I mean, also you guys gave me another gift and he's gonna be really upset that I bring this up. You guys gave me a gift that I never thought I would have. South Bay Community Church gave me a best friend. Not just a best friend, a guy I consider now family. John Long. John Long is the son of Dr. Long and Ruby Long and the brother of Tammy Long, who's now the pastor now, so I give her much credit. You are awesome, girl. So this young man and I, he was much older than me. He didn't have to take me under his wing. He didn't have to like say, hey, we should do these things. And he and I went on so many adventures trying to find what it meant to be a young black Christian in the 90s. And we are still friends and still brothers to this day. We are in our 40s. He's almost 50. We are in our 40s and we are still friends. And that's a gift that I can never, ever repay South Bay for. So thank you for helping me become who I am. Thank you for allowing my mom to have a place to blossom. And thank you, Dr. Long, for your words. Thank you, Ruby, for always being so sweet. Thank you, South Bay family, for just being who you are. And thank you for giving me the gift of John. So I just want to say happy anniversary. And thank you for being who you are. And many, 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 many more years of greatness at South Bay Community Church. Thanks. Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon that distant shore, I know you'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see And if the wind keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon that distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see And if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. I realize in 
this life We're gonna be tossed in turn By the waves and the currents That seem so fierce But in the word of God I have an anchor and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the time. Oh, when the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life. My soul has been anchored in the Lord, in the Lord, yo, my soul has been anchored. soul has been angered my soul has been angered my soul has been angered in the Lord my soul has been angered in the Lord the billows may roll the breakers may dash but I shall not stray because he holds me fast so dark the day Clouds in the sky, I know it's all right because Jesus is now my soul, my soul, my, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. Thank you. Happy anniversary, South Bay. Continue with our time of worship. We are also reflecting on the idea that we are rooted in Christ. That for 35 years, God has been faithful and we are rooted in Christ. As we just hold these thoughts in gratitude, we now will have the privilege of hearing a word from Pastor Joseph Rashid. He is married to Rochelle Rashid, and they've been the parents to five daughters, one son. They're the grandparents of four grandchildren. He holds a bachelor's degree of pastoral studies from Patton right here in Oakland and a, a theological degree from Dallas Theological Seminary. He and his wife planted Crossroads Covenant Church in 2005 in DeSoto, Texas, where he currently serves as lead pastor. He's also the Africa Regional Coordinator with Sove Globally, the Evangelical Covenant Church, our denomination, the ECC, overseeing missionaries and ministry partners in seven African countries. He's also close to the heart of South Bay. He's the cousin of our own, Edie Ogwen. Uh, he knows myself, Pastor Brian and, and Dr. Long. In fact, he was the, the pastor who performed my ordination. So he is very close to our family, and we are so delighted at this time to welcome Pastor Joseph Rashid this morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a privilege to be with you today in service as we celebrate your church's anniversary, your 35th anniversary. I give honor to God, to your pastor emeritus, Dr. Stanley Long, a man who I have admired for years, who has been very influential in teaching me the principles of integrity. To your pastor, Brian Murphy, a man who I love and have grown to love even more and more over the years of serving in the African American Ministers Association of the Evangelical Covenant Church. To your pastor, Tammy Long, 
who is as sweet as she is beautiful, who is just as kind and thoughtful as she is intelligent. I give thanks to your uh, church anniversary committee, uh, a whole group of people uh, who have come together to present such a magnificent program just for you. To you, my brothers and sisters in South Bay community, we thank you for this privilege, but we honor you. We praise God for you. My wife and I, we pray for you often. And there's a reason why, because whether you know it or not, we are connected. We're all connected. Now, I might tell you about that later on, but in this connection, I'm so glad to be with you today. I know that it is a privilege because one of the things you're not suffering from is pulpit insufficiency, but you are all together growing in Christ. I think the theme that you have chosen is a wonderful theme, 35 years, growing together, Rooted in Christ. What a marvelous theme. And today I'd like to use that as my theme, uh, growing together, rooted in Christ. And for a theme scripture, I'd like to go to Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And I'll ask that you will navigate your way there with me to Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. I say navigate because now we have mobile devices, and very seldom do we use uh, real Bibles, but please navigate your way. Whatever way that you can get there, please navigate your way to Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. I'm going to read from the New International Version of the Bible. And wherever you are, whether you're in your home or wherever you are, I hope that you will stand with me in reverence to the Scripture. The word of the Lord reads like this. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Would you pray with me? Dear Father, we ask that you will bless us in our time together we pray, God, that you will speak to our hearts now and you will enlighten our minds to understand the importance of your church, of growing together, of being rooted in you. We ask, God, for your blessings upon South Bay. We're thankful, God, for the ministry that you have given them, for the leaders that you have blessed them with, and for the entire South Bay community. Now, Lord, we pray that you will remove all of our agendas, you will speak to us, you will speak through me, and your word will be received by your people. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're standing, you may take your seats. The letter to the Colossians was written to the entire church of the city. Colossae is a city that was uh, near a very prominent valley, it was situated on a main road where it could take you to a major city of beauty, a city of excitement, a city of adventure. The city was called Ephesus. Colossae was a city where the commerce was once booming, but now had dwindled. And in this city, God planted his church. In this particular valley, God planted his church, not just to plant a church for the locals, but he planted a church that would go on and on and on, enriching the lives of the people near and far. When you think of Colossae, think of the city of Fremont, California, this near valley. Silicon Valley, uh, an area that was once booming in commerce, but now it's dwindled just a bit. Situated very closely to Highway 880 that can take you to a major city, either San Jose or San Francisco. 
cities bustling with excitement, cities bustling with adventure, cities bustling with newness, but it is in Fremont, California that God decided this is where I will plant my church. This is where I will plant South Bay. And there in Fremont, God has given a great ministry, a wonderful opportunity for souls to come, for souls to be connected to the kingdom forever and ever. Yes, God did something great in the city of Fremont when he planted South Bay. Paul's purpose in writing this letter was to encourage the church to stay focused. See, there's a lot of stuff going on, but Paul wanted them to stay focused on Christ, to grow together, to grow together, but stay rooted in Christ. And in this book of Colossians, he tells us why. He says, because you have received the Lord Jesus, because you have received Christ Jesus as Lord. Because of Christ, that's why I want you to stay focused and remain together. In verse 6, he makes it plain that you received Christ Jesus. Who is this Lord Jesus Christ? Who is he? Well, what, what did he come to do? We have to understand, first of all, who it is that we've received. We have received the Almighty One. We have received the Alpha and Omega. We have received the eternal Son of God. We have received the Holy One, the Messiah. He is the image of the invisible God. According to Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God. He came with a purpose to reveal who God was, to reveal that God is not some angry man in heaven with long, white, flowing hair and fiery eyes throwing darts at his children. No, to reveal that he's the God of glory and the God of grace. Jesus Christ came to make visible the invisible image of God. The Word says in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Yes, Jesus came in the flesh to show us what God is like. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. God became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ became flesh and let us know this is what God is like. We see him. We beheld him. The glory and the grace of Jesus Christ. The glory and the grace of God. The glory, you remember the glory, don't you? When he was born, the angel said, glory to God. And on earth, peace, goodwill to men. We remember his glory, don't we? He's the firstborn over all creation. He holds all things together. That's glory. We behold, he not only holds all things together, but without him, nothing that is made was made. He's Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. He is the word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. But he's not only the glory, he's also the grace. That's what you've received. You have received the glory of God, but you've also received the grace of God. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, it says that once we were alienated from God, but because of Jesus Christ, now we have been reconnected in fellowship with God the Father. That's grace. That's grace. That's the grace. Now understand, he got us together for the purpose of uniting us to be together, to grow together, to live together, to fellowship together, to worship together, to pray together, to endure together, to persevere together. Jesus Christ. And that's who you've received. That's who I've received. That's who we receive to be placed in the body. You see, we're not just individuals. We're not just, yes, we, I mean, we're individuals, but we're not just individuals just doing our own thing. Uh, but uh, we, we are not just people who, who exist to, to follow our own mind. No, 
we're, we got a body. We're placed in a body. And we grow together as a body. And that body only has one head, and that head is Jesus Christ. That's who this Jesus is. He's the head of the body. If you see a particular body where, where, where the baby is, uh, has a real big head, but the body is very little, you say, hmm, something's wrong. If you see a body that has real big feet, uh, but the arms are real, real short, you say, hmm, something's wrong. That's why Christ wants us in the body to grow together. The hands grow together. The feet grow together. The ears match the size of the head. Everything grows together for the glory and through the grace of Jesus Christ, the one who you received. That's who he is. He's the God of glory and he's the God of grace. So Paul says, Stay together just as you received him. That's, that's very important. You've received him. But you received him for a purpose, and that purpose is to be placed in the body by him and to grow together in the grace of our God. And then he says this in verse 6. He says, just as you've received him, continue. Continue to live your lives in him, continue or remain, remain in him. Jesus Christ says, not only did you receive me, but I want you to remain in me. Now, remember, you're a part of his body, uh, and you're, because, you, because you're a part of the body, remember that he is the head. Remember that you are part of the body. And as a part of the body, there's only one head. And he wants you to remain in him. He wants you to remain in him. In John chapter 15, Jesus says this, I am the vine, you are the branches, my father is the vine dresser. I'm going to let that soak in just a minute. In John chapter 15, Jesus says this, I am the vine, meaning he is Jesus Christ. He is the vine. You are the branches. Unless you remain in me, you can bear no fruit. I'm going to let that sink in just for a minute. Jesus is being very clear to us. I am the vine. I am the source of life. I want you to live and live life abundantly. But in order to do that, you must remain in me. You must remember. You, 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 you must contain yourself. You must remain in me. You must not go off on your own tangent. You must not develop your own theology. I am the vine. I am the source. I am the very reason for your existence. I am the vine. You are the branches. You must remain in me. But if you don't remain in me, you can't bear any fruit. You won't grow. If you've ever seen a grapevine, you notice that in the grapevine, there are several other vines that are growing off of the grapevine. Some of them have no fruit at all. Some of them have nothing at all. The vine dresser comes along and he picks off those branches that bear no fruit. Those are called sucker branches. See, the sucker branch is only to sap the life out of the vine. It's to rob it of its nutrients. It's to steal from the fruit what the fruit should really get. The sucker branches are picked off by the vine dresser and dropped on the ground. They're not gathered up right then. They're dropped on the ground. And as they are dropped on the ground, Later on, the farmer will come along and make an incision. I'm going somewhere with this in the vine and pick up the sucker branch and insert it. And the, vine, the sucker branch will come to life. Why? Because of the vine. It's the vine that's the source of life. And Jesus is telling you and I, you might be taken off, but you will still be connected. Once the father comes along and reconnects you to the vine, then you can bear much fruit. So remain in me. Remain in me. 
Don't go off on your own tangent. Well, you know, I, I, I heard what the preacher said. I, I heard what the pastor said. But, you know, I think I'll go check with what Oprah has to say. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, I did. I did get the counseling. But I'm going to go follow what Dr. Phil has to say. No, 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 no. We are in the body of Christ. And we must remain in the body of Christ, not just on Sunday, not just when we feel like it. But we are to remain in the body of Christ and live our lives for him giving him glory, giving him praise, and giving him honor. Glory be to God. Remain in him. Continue to live your lives in him. I know you bear good fruit. I know you bear some really good fruit. I've seen it myself. My first trip to South Bay, I was brought there by my cousin. Edie O'Gwen is my cousin, and I love her dearly. She was my first caretaker. She was my, she's been my everything for most of my life. And when she came to the Lord, she was so excited and we rejoiced. But when I went to California, we went to South Bay. This was not the big building that you're in now. This was the smaller building right in front of that. This was the smaller building. When the youth went outside, they actually had to leave the building. Yvonne Devon was leading worship that day. And at the end of the service, after Dr. Long had given us a, a, a challenging message, he said, now, if anyone is here and they're out of a job, won't you stand and come forward? We'd like to pray for you. I thought to myself, ain't nobody going to stand up and admit that. Ain't nobody going to admit that they're out of work. But all of a sudden, people started standing up and they started coming forward. And before I knew it, the whole front of the church was filled it, it was crowded. They even had two rows. And, 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 and so he says, we're going to pray for these people. We're going to pray for each and every one of them. And he, he walked down in order to pray with them. And, 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 but my cousin, she sat down and started writing out a check. I, I didn't understand that because we had already had the offering. But she sat down and started writing a check. And so she ripped that check out and she wrote another one. And, and she wrote another one. And I was trying to figure out what's going on here. What kind of church am I in where the people come forward because they're out of luck? They're not proud. They're not, they're, they're not, they're not too, too arrogant to say, yes, I need the Lord. Yes, I need some help. Yes, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh, Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. They came forward as they were receiving prayer, I begin to look around the room and I begin to notice that people were standing up, running up to these people, running behind them. And I watched my cousin as she went up and she put a check in one person's hand. She slipped another check in somebody's pocket. And so after church, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I had to ask her, what is going on here? What's going on with the checks? What's going on with the money? And this is what she told me. She said, look, those people are out of work and perhaps they'll have a job interview this week. And our pastor has taught us that we can help them. We can go with them to that job interview by slipping some gas money in their hand. Maybe they need some food. We can help them by just helping them with a meal for, for, uh, through the week. We can do different things to bless them with our finance because God has blessed us to bless others. God has not just blessed us so we could be proud and arrogant ourselves, but God has blessed us as as a church family to bless them, and that is the fruit of this offering. You bear good fruit. You have bared good fruit because you have remained in him. You bear good fruit. You bear fruit because you have remained in Jesus Christ. He is the vine. You are the branches. But that's not all. Paul says... Not only do you remain in him, but you're rooted in him. You're rooted in him. The roots are what we don't see of a tree. They go deep down into the earth. He says you are rooted in him. You are rooted in him, and roots give the ability to withstand the storm. Roots. You know the parable of the soils. Matthew chapter 13, the sower went out and he threw some seed and some of it fell by the path and the birds came and ate it, no root. 
Some of it fell by the rocks, and, and the rocks didn't have enough soil, so the roots couldn't take effect. It, it didn't have a good rooting system, so when the heat of the sun came, it withered. The sower kept sowing, and some of the, the seed fell in the thorns, and the, the thorns grew up and choked the plants. Ah, but then there's that last category, the last category where the seed fell in good soil. The seed fell in good soil, and it, it produced an abundant crop crop of 30, 60, and even a hundredfold. Uh, the, the crop was so abundant until the, the sower was satisfied. You are that good crop. You are rooted in Christ through the teaching of your leaders, through the applications of Scripture. You are that good. You are that seed that has fell on good soil. You are that seed that has fell on good soil, that has grown in Christ, that has grown in your understanding of Christ, that is able to share Christ with the world, that is able to stick together through the hard times, that is able to endure when the wind blows, that is able to stick together and hold out for Jesus Christ to bring his deliverance his way. You know, one of the things that I've often wondered about was the palm tree. And palm trees are very, very popular in California. Not so much here in Texas, but they're very, very popular in California. And growing up in California, I used to love to go to Los Angeles and just look at the beautiful palm trees. They were tall, they were slender, but here's one thing that I discovered about the palm tree. The palm tree, as tall as it is, you would think that it had really deep, deep roots because according to the, the, the scientists, the tree grows according to the depth of the root. But here's what I, find out, I found out, that a palm tree, their roots grow 36 inches, 36 inches down into the ground. Only 36 inches, three feet into the ground. But what those roots do is the roots spread. They grow horizontally. They connect with one another, and they keep spreading and spreading and spreading. And as the tree goes taller, the roots grow out as much as 50 feet. So when the winds come, the tree can bend, the tree can bow, because the roots are holding it down. When the winds blow, the tree can stand because nothing can take it over because of the roots. You are rooted in Christ. And when the winds of adversity have come against you, you are rooted in Christ. You can stand the adversity. You can stand the strong rains. You can stand the storm because of the roots of your togetherness. God has rooted you together, rooted you in him. And because you're rooted in him, you are doing a good work. You continue to grow together. As you grow together, there's no competition in growing together. Only unity. There's only unity. Stay rooted in him. Remain in him. And make sure that not only do you receive him, but you allow others to receive him. That's why God planted you in Fremont, California. 35 years. 35 years. 35 years of growing together, rooted in Christ. Because you've received Jesus as Lord. He's your Savior. He belongs to you and you belong to him. I urge you to continue to live your life in him. Remain in him. Remember your role. He's the vine. You're the branch. But most of all, stay rooted in him and allow your roots to grow not deep but wide to be able to stand the storms of life. Join me now as we pray. Dear Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, 
I pray, God, that you will bless South Bay Community Church according to your riches in glory. I ask, God, that you will grant South Bay to be strengthened with power through your Holy Spirit so that Christ may continue to dwell in their hearts through faith. The South Bay may remain rooted and grounded in love and together may comprehend the breadth, the length, the height and the depth, and the love of Christ that surpasses all human understanding. Bless their leaders. Bless their community. Bless every family that's represented. And forevermore, God, be glorified. Great God of glory and God of grace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In 35 years. What a glorious gift the family of God in South Bay has been. Uh, we are going to wrap up our worship service this morning, family, and we're going to uh, transition into a, a little bit of a celebration time. Uh, and so we, we really want to uh, give a little space for those that may have, have to run off. Hopefully you got your picked up your uh, celebration anniversary kit. We're going to pull those out with some instructions in just a minute, but I, I wanted to give a couple of announcements of things that are coming down the pipe. Uh, first of all, the main thing I wanted you to know is this Saturday coming up is our second phrase in the parking lot. If you missed the first one, you missed a lot. It was an incredible time of worship. an incredible time that was just a little a little slice of what you can receive this saturday october 31st um but here's what you got to do we we require that we have tickets because we're still trying to stay socially distanced and safe so we need you to go to our website you will see a link to our two service times this saturday 12 and 2 30 make sure you buy your ticket it's one ticket per car so um your family members can can uh, can be in the car together, but we need one ticket. For if you're in the Bay Area, you're not going to want to miss it. We don't quite have it ready, set up for a broadcast yet. I know people are going to be asking. We're not going to be streaming it on Zoom, but if you are in the Bay Area, this is going to be the place you want to be this Saturday, October 31st. So head to the website and check out uh, the links for those two times to buy your tickets. Also on the website, you'll see that we've got our new uh, Sunday school class that you can register for. Uh, a longtime member, Dr. Terry Thompson, is is ramping up a new class. You want to check that out and see what see what amazing things that she's got in store for that class. And then finally, uh, we want to encourage you just to kind of browse around the site. People have been asking for a long time, uh, how do I keep up with what's happening on the site? We've got a brand new look and feel to the website. Uh, and so one of the things you'll find is a link to the Journey News or <clears throat> our weekly newsletter that has all of the information about what's coming. So go to the website, www.sobcc.org, and you'll get all the information about what's coming up. And, and I actually also want to make sure that if you are uh, continuing
continuing to uh, uh, be blessed by the ministry, if you're continuing to look for ways that word of uh, word of Christ can go out into this world, we want to encourage you to partner with the ministry. Also on the top of the uh, website, you see two buttons. You'll see I'm new. If you are new to South Bay, we would love to make sure that we get a chance to reach out to you and, um, and connect you with our church family. Um, hold on, I'm going to... Uh, to make sure that you've got a chance to make the connections. Even though we're socially distanced, we're still praying together. We're still doing small groups. We're still growing. We even got some service opportunities coming up. So if you're new and you're not plugged in, make sure you fill out that I'm new button. And we also want to remind all of our members, uh, please click on the online giving. Uh, it's one of the most convenient ways for you to partner and support the ministry. Both, all of that is on the website. So please check that out uh, right after the service. We're going to take a few minutes as we wrap up our service today to give a little a little time for people to um, to uh, connect again and say hello before we start our service uh, our celebration uh, the 35th anniversary committee. Uh, can we just take a moment and just give them a quick round of applause for just all that they did to put this together today? Thank you, committee. But they got more in store for us, so we're going to take a quick break to transition as we close our worship service. Thank you again, Pastor Joseph. Thank you for uh, praise and worship team, uh, Dr. Uh, I'm not Dr. Dr. Long and Mrs. Long. I see you out there. Thank you for the vision that God gave you so many years ago. And uh, for James Eichelhart, what a blessing. So wonderful to see faces old and new. I'm going to pray a quick prayer of benediction. And then we're going to transition into our, um, our, our toast and our celebration of what God has been doing at South Bay for 35 years. So if you would just take a moment and bow and pray for me. Pray with me. Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the word that we were uh, given today from your servant, God, that a uh, reminder that we are indeed rooted in you, rooted together and growing into the image of Christ that you've called each one of us to be, but not just individually, collectively. Father, for 35 years, you have been using your word to grow us, to stretch us, to, to change us, to transform us, and God, we are continuing to be light and salt in a community that in this season, maybe more than ever, God needs to know that Jesus Christ is real. So help, help the ministry of South Bay continue, God, not just through 35, but for another 35 years, God. Help us to continue to represent you, that you may receive power and glory as your children come together to worship your name together. And then we take the light of Jesus out into a broken world. Father, I pray blessings on every household, every individual represented here. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this day of celebration and continue to bless each one of us that we may be, bring glory to the, our Savior, to our Lord, to the one who loves us more than we can even ask, dream, or imagine. To you be all honor and glory in Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen. 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 So we're going to transition. Um, Pastor Tammy, do you have any instructions or we're just going to give them a few minutes to get ready for our the next part of our celebration? Uh, yes, we'll take about um, five to seven minutes for a bio break for you to get your, um, your sparkling cider and your glass for our toast. Uh, if you weren't able to pick up your, your kit, any, any drink that you can toast with us will do. And so we will resume together uh, in about seven minutes. And so um, see you soon. South Bay Community Church, I would like to make a toast. I'd like to make a toast to all that God has done for South Bay. He has been our keeper. He has been our sustainer. He has been our healer. He has been our help. And so we give him all the glory for 35 years of faithfulness. And if you agree with me, just raise your glass and say, to God be the glory. To God, to God be, the glory. be the glory. Amen. Amen. Now to our I would like to propose a toast. To God be the glory. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is the potter and we are the clay. Amen. Please join me in saying, to God be the glory. To God. to God be the glory. 35th anniversary for a God who takes individual lives and brings them together, makes them into something beautiful, individually and collectively. To God be the glory. God be the glory for calling us each together 
and knitting us as a family as we connect with God and grow together and change the world bonded as brothers and sisters. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I am so grateful to be walking this journey with my South Bay family. The love uh, that, that has just been shown among our family members. Only God gets the glory for that. So I would encourage us to continue to be rooted together, to hold the God's unchanging hand and to love one another as we have over the last 35 years and continue to grow in him. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for his great wisdom in assembling um, a diverse and terrific group of people who together have planted a beachhead yes. from which he can continue yes. to tell his story to a dying world. Yes, yes, yes. And may many come to know him and grow in him through the South Bay family. Yes. To God be the glory. How can we say thanks for the things you've done for us, O oh God? Things so undeserved that you gave to prove your love for us. The voices of a million angels could not express our gratitude. Yes. All that we are and ever hope to be, yes, yes, we yes. owe it all Jesus. to you. Thank you God. To God be the glory. Yes. To God, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Amen.